Hello there, and welcome to year three of the Us Time Film Podcast, where we talk film, TV, games, and all that jazz that there's no tomorrow. This week, we're talking about Pinocchio 1940. My name is Tom, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, John. How are you this week? Um, I'm okay, because <laughs> we'll talk about the 1940 version of the film. This was made where cinema was in its early stages, but, you know, like we got mm. Buster Keaton, who was a lot earlier, but with animation starting like this, it's so clean. It's amazing how they drew that in 1940. But we just revisited because of the new Pinocchio films. Yeah, absolutely. So Pinocchio, briefly explain the plot for those who don't know. <clears throat> Pinocchio, marionette, must earn the right to become a real boy by proving it to be the truthful, brave, and selfless. He is assisted by Jiminy Cricket, his assigned conscience. Awesome. So this is the earliest film we've covered on the podcast, being 80 years old. And like, oh man, it feels like it. They truly don't make animated films like this anymore. And I think that all of that is the tonal shift in this movie. Oh uh-huh. my God. It starts out so wholesome, cute, and sweet, and you feel like you'll be given a big hug. The music is lovely, and there's so many little details in this opening 20 minutes. And then, oh my god, it it genuinely goes from so quaint to just so emotionally <laughs> damaging. What did you think? I did not expect this. I watched this film at a really early stage in my life, and I was watching it, and none of those dark things that just came to my mind. It was like, huh donkey but no look at this later it's the most darkest thing that disney ever put out i don't know how this got through the haze code okay i'll give you some context the haze codes in the early time in hollywood it said like if this was suitable for an audience we very much like credit alfred hitchcock and psycho for kind of breaking down the haze code you know that would yeah. have so many restrictions on what could and couldn't be shown i guess yeah, yeah. because this is an animated film it might get away with some stuff but geez i mean i remember before like i'm the same as you i haven't watched this film since i was like five years old like really young and i remember like when i turned it on i was like ah when i would watch this when i was young it, it was scary but there's no way it'll still be scary right <laughs> i wasn't prepared Oh man, there's just this this guttural feeling that I have of just like terror inside like this film. And I think a lot of kids films in this era and kids stories in general were really dark and did impart this like terrifying truth to you. At the end of the day, like this, this film is like imparting some really like harsh life lessons about like trusting strangers and and stuff like that the entire journey that Pinocchio goes on is is a whole metaphor for being good and my my god does it do it in such a raw way like oh oh boy I don't know how I'm okay (laughs) like after watching this film when I was like I don't know six or five and I'm like (laughs) what a wholesome film and then later on I'm just like oh how did we turn out okay I mean it really is I mean it makes me think because obviously there are loads of Disney films from this era and it, it does make me think like what will happen if I rewatch some of these kind of like classics like are they gonna be just like terrifying I mean we know that they've already dated loads in terms of like racist depictions and stuff like that but is it just gonna end up being super like emotionally scarring who knows I definitely wonder next week when we cover the 2022 Pinocchio, how are they going to translate all this? I don't know. Oh, that's going to be so weird because I don't know how they're going to do the cat and the goldfish because the cat and the oh goldfish. Oh my God. They are the most cutest thing, Figaro and Cleo. That was like a memory that was hidden and it was just unlocked. I was like, oh, the yes. cat and the goldfish. Oh yeah. It was like, oh hell yeah. I'm, I'm intrigued for this film. And then, <laughs> you know what happened. <laughs> No, what happened. Yeah. Honestly, like, I think that first 20 minutes is just the most quaint and wholesome thing. Like, I just felt so embraced and it felt so warm. The music is so beautiful and everything within Geppetto's shop is so lovingly crafted. Like, you can tell that the animators and all, like, the designers are really, like, you know, making this feel like it is this really sweet place. And when Geppetto completes Pinocchio and he's kind of dancing him about the room, there's, like, this kind of clockwork band that's, like, moving. Oh, yeah. And that was, like, a memory that I unlocked. 
And I was like, oh man, it's those guys. And you know, Jiminy Cricket starts to like play along with his umbrella. And it's it was it really was just so cute. And you know, you gotta remember 1940, this is wartime, you know, World War Two has just started. Like, it's not a good time. And I genuinely thought at the beginning, I was like, ah, oh, this is gonna be a nice escapism for the war. And then at the end, it's like, oh no, this is this is just metaphors for the war right now. <laughs> And there was so much detail that was put into this film, like with the clocks, with everything what Geppetto worked on. And I really liked like how they worked on and like how puppets moved mm. and it would like work towards other animals or anything. So like how Geppetto was moving Pinocchio towards Figaro and it was like mirroring each other. And it was like really interesting how a puppet was doing that because I think Geppetto was trying to show his vision. And I was like, I thought that was a great way of showing mm. that. It is really interesting how they make everything move. Like at the end, you've got this whole underwater sequence and oh. everything has like this kind of weight to it, you know, because they're all like yeah. wading through water and, and, you know, everything swims in such a like a unique way. And when the characters run and when they walk and the way that rain interacts. And you've got to remember that this is all hand drawn, hand painted animation. Like this is so astounding, even watching it 80 years later. And so many animations now are just given like this 3D animation that is pretty kind of underwhelming but this I just feel like it has so much love and care and like craftsmanship put into it and you still do get animation like that but oh, yeah. there is definitely something you special do. about this yeah especially that was made during second world war this is a really special film it's put with care and it's like pure escapism in the first 20 minutes you're just like wow yeah this is a film that's only 90 minutes long and I feel like it's so well paced. There are about four main sections of the movie. You've got the beginning with Geppetto in his shop, and then you've got Pinocchio as a stage performer, and then you've got Pinocchio in Pleasure Island, and then you've got whale sequence. And I feel like for what is essentially 20 minute chunks of the movie, they're all so well kind of realized. However, I do have to say, barely any of the plot lines get resolved when Pinocchio begins to turn into a donkey, right, he sees his friend turn into a donkey before his eyes. And then and we get to see such a terrifying scene of this guy taking the kids who have turned into donkeys and putting them in cages. Some of the donkeys can still speak English and are crying out for their mothers. And oh, my God. It's emotionally damaging. <laughs> it, re oh, it really, it really is. And when Pinocchio begins to turn, Jiminy's like, we've got to get out of there quick. And they get out of there and that's it. Yeah, what they happened? leave them. What, they leave where them did there. they go? And that was the most messed up part. They leave the rest of the children there at the park. And I'm like, what? Surely that's going to be resolved in the modern stuff yeah. right now. Come on, that that was the most messed up. They they were literally crying now for the mothers and everything. And I thought that was the most saddest thing. Like I remember I saw a tweet where it says like if villains or heroes were about to meet their fate or crisis, crying out for the mother is like the most saddest thing. <laughs> that was like the thing that's happening. I was like, oh god, this is so sad. It's like they're turning to donkeys and they're crying out for mother. <sighs> Yeah, that can really hit hard. Like in quite a couple of war movies, you'll get soldiers who are on their deathbeds crying out for their mothers. And, and that really does hit. And it hits just as equally here. But I just don't know why they like there are. It's the most so the, messed up thing. <laughs> So there's 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 the kind of three characters who just kind of get away with all their evil doings. There's the guy oh. who has all of the donkeys. There's also Stromboli who tries to lock Pinocchio or, or succeeds in locking Pinocchio up in a cage after he's like a performer. And there's also Honest John. Is that his name? Yeah, Honest John. Honest John. Who? I just love how Pinocchio is like, oh, honest John. Yeah, obviously you're so honest. I'm going to just be an actor with you. Of course, like brilliant. The wide eyed way that Pinocchio sees the world, but all three of these characters just get away with it. They don't get any comeuppance. Yeah. They don't get defeated or anything like that. They just get away with it. That also confused me with the Hays Code because usually there's going to be some comeuppance for the villain or something serving. So for example, there had to be an alternative ending for Vertigo. Yes, Vertigo, um, yeah, I was, I was yeah, just thinking so, that. Yeah, and they needed that to show good morality. 
But then in Pinocchio, as you just said, they got away. And that is like the most annoying, but also sad, but also why? <laughs> I because mean, it's about... oh, okay, it's, I, yeah, it's yeah. bold. Like no kids film these days would do that, and I think that's just so like insane that they that they really went for it. This film True. Yeah, really yeah. has some like proper like raw like lessons about the world that villains will get away with it and people aren't all good and it's like damn like yeah of course it's it's stupid and people are turning into donkeys and there are fairies in wales and all like these disney like magic stuff but it, it's really imparting just some absolute brutal stuff it's the dark reality let's just go with these down real quick just because <laughs> the film it's just like emotional water goes so just like oh how's it no not the dark oh uh, big whale <laughs> uh, yeah and then and then at the end they managed to make it really cute and wholesome again like when pinocchio becomes a real boy and once again they're back in geppetto's uh, shop and they're like dancing about again and i'm like how did you do this how how did you manage to balance these tones so well it's crazy how they did that and it's just like how they brought back the tones it's so hard to explain you know what i mean like they just brought back the tone and then just like decided nothing ever just happened like the, the beginning and then you got the middle and then you got the end and it's like oh yay it's a wholesome ending <laughs> there's this ongoing joke that happens quite a couple of times with geppetto which i think is just so funny where pinocchio will be like hey dad and he'll be like not now pinocchio you're dead and oh, he's like no yeah. i'm alive and he's like no you're dead lie back down he's like no i'm alive he's like oh you're alive and it's just <laughs> the funniest thing yeah that's really funny as well and there's a really good winning joke as well where figaro doesn't have a strong relationship with cleo so Geppetto tries to get them along and then you can see them like celebrating together. And then at the end, Figaro actually jumps in into the ball and just kisses yeah. Cleo and it's like celebration. And it's like, yes. It's such a weird, like only, only in this film could there be a cat goldfish relationship just in the middle of it all. And it's cute. Like their kind of friendship and they have like, you know, small scenes, but I think that they're very fun and cute. But I will say, Geppetto, he's in that first section of the film. And then you yeah. see him looking for Pinocchio for like a brief scene. And then at the end, just <laughs> Pinocchio and, and Jiminy get a letter uh, that just says, by the way, your dad's in a whale. And it's like, <laughs> what? How did he get in the whale? Like, what happened? I didn't know how. It, it's Okay, so I don't know what his thought process was. Like, okay. So Pinocchio might be somewhere out in, I don't know, beyond the village or somewhere. Or he's in the ocean. That is a weird choice. Like a bird just decides to drop down a letter and say, hey. I'm going to guess that the bird was like working for the fairy or something like that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure because there was a light and then the light turned into a bird and dropped the Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I think that one thing that the Disney live action remakes like to do is they they like to add just an extra hour of content that explains plot holes. So, for example, in Beauty and the Beast, they add this whole subplot with Belle's mom. In Aladdin, they add the whole subplot of the what? other prince. In Mulan, which we talked about on the podcast and remains oh, to this yeah. day our most viewed video. But in Mulan, they added the whole thing where like she has like superpowers. And I think, especially because they cast Tom Hanks as Geppetto in the new one, we're going to see it. We're going to see, like, Geppetto's whole thing. They're going to add that whole, like, journey. And we're going to see how he got into that whale. I'm sh I'm sure of it. Yes. And then the cat how are they going to do the cat, though, in, in the goldfish? I, I think it's going to be CGI, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> God okay. damn it. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> I mean, like... I do think there's such an innocence to the way that this film looks and sounds. The songs oh, the, and the oh, music. The sounds. I was about to go into that. I was like, oh, the sounds like every action or every move or when the mood changes or anything. It's just like amazing how they put so much detail. Like, you know, Pinocchio could run somewhere and then the music just like, or violence is like, you know, rising up tension, like just running around. It's like so much detail into it with the music. Yeah, and there's not a whole lot of like actual songs, but I think the songs are nice and, and fun. And there's this whole I've Got No Strings song, which yeah. like 
Oh my god. It's just so it starts out with Pinocchio, you know, I'm sure people listening know the song, but he's singing like, you know, he's got no strings and he walked down the stairs and blah blah blah. And then you get all these other kinds of puppets. There's a lot of stuff going on. I couldn't even like tell. It's like there's like milkmaids and then there's like dancers and then there's like Russian dancers. Point being is that they just they do this whole sequence where Pinocchio is getting like tied up in the strings and the dancers are spinning around and it, it's so much. And what I noticed is like there's not a lot of sound effects. Like in terms of like the foley, when characters walk down like like a road, you don't really like hear unless it's like something really important. And I think that that that's like it makes some of those like big movements, like when somebody gets hit by a mallet or when Pinocchio falls over, it makes those oh, yeah. things, you know, feel like kind of, it gives it a little bit of a magic. I really can't explain it, but maybe it's nostalgia, but like the, the Disney films, the, the just the way that they're crafted, it, it, it feels like just really wholesome. Yeah, it was like discovering temptations because early in the film, I don't know who said, but like Jiminy Cricket said, there are temptations in the world and there's a whole scene like, with all the boys in Pleasure Island smoking, drinking alcohol, gambling or anything. And it was a clear message for that. I don't know why it was this shown to audience like this. It was like, oh, what wholesome film. And then just shows up like smoking, gambling and alcoholism. And... Yeah, I love how that's that's the first thing that the boys do. It's like, welcome to Pleasure Island. And all the boys are like, yeah, get the drinks out, get the smokes. We're gonna, we're gonna raise this place to the ground. Like they don't, they don't even think twice. They just start smashing stuff up. And then they become donkeys. And it's like, well, that's your comeuppance, I guess. Yeah, and that's a really dark reality, really. Like that, that because one of the characters, oh yeah, it was Jimmy Cricket who said they'll make a jackass out of them. It was showing a clear message with how, you know, smoking or alcoholism, gambling will take you to like a very dark turn in life and they are tempted and then they are completely taken away. But in this film, it's just so sad. Like, they turn into donkeys. Yeah, we have to reiterate, in case you missed it, they turn into donkeys. Um, We're not joking. They turn into donkeys. If you have not seen this film, it's just like, how did he think of this? An early point when I watched the film, I thought they're going to get kicked out or anything else. When the the wrangler, for, for lack of a better term, gets all the donkeys and he puts them in crates, the crates are like, sell to the circus, like, go to the mines. And it's like, damn, like, they're really going for it. And it, it it's just so like terrify it really makes you know stranger danger it really capitalizes on how scary that is when you're a kid like the concept of somebody just finding you on a street and just taking you and coercing you into going like pinocchio is just persuaded to go because he's young and impressionable but the reality is is that it's just scary but at the same time i really respect that the film did that and i just wish that it had wrapped up those plot lines at all like in my head those kids die oh my god yeah and hopefully they'll do something about it in the modern because it is just so sad like they just left there and then pinocchio is like let's go and then just just leaves them (laughs) i think i have a feeling that the the modern version will do a kind of indiana jones and the temple of doom not exactly but they're gonna they'll free the slaves right (laughs) i don't think it's gonna be the same as indiana jones where they beat everyone up but through some sense of shenanigans, they're going to free the slaves in some capacity. Because, I don't know, like, if you had a kid, would you show this to your kid? That's really hard to think, because it's got a good message. But I just don't want to traumatize the kid. <laughs> like, with the donkeys, I'm like, no, that's good, like, a 50-50 chance. Of my kid might come out really nice, or, you know, thought about the message, or come out really traumatized. Like, I just came out like, hey, it's a wholesome film. And then not thought about the donkeys ever since. And it came back. Well, well, when I was young, I was scared of, like, Coraline, which is, oh, like, Coraline. Okay. great film. But there's a lot of, like, traumatizing stuff when you're a kid. I don't know how I watched Coraline and I was like, oh, terrifying. And I watched Pinocchio and I was like, yeah, cool. Not that. It's a little bit scary, but it's fine. Like, how? Okay, here's, my, here's the thing. I can't bring myself to watch Coraline. It's just so visually disturbing to me. It's just, like... <laughs> Yeah, no. I've always no, been scared okay. of that ending. I haven't watched it for years. The ending. There's a terrible end. Oh, no, okay, I'm not gonna watch it. Sorry. No, that's not gonna be on my bucket list. No, 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 Fair no, enough. no. It's probably not as traumatizing as 
Pinocchio, though, because my God, I'm going to be thinking about this for a long time. I'm having oh, nightmares. God. Oh, Tom, Tom, I just thought about something. What? what if they're going to recreate that scene, right, turn into donkeys? Oh, they definitely, like, if the donkeys it isn't will. in the live action film, I don't know what the point is. The whole, like, donkey bit is so important, you know, to it Pinocchio. It is, it is. And I like, th- th- there's interesting things, like, the most famous thing about Pinocchio, arguably, is his nose growing when he lies, right? But yeah. that only happens once. Uh, yeah, why is that so iconically made? You know what I mean? Like, it's not explored throughout the film. Like, I thought that it happened a lot more than just once, you know? Yeah, I, I don't know why. I thought there would be a lot more scenes with him lying but no yeah and i like how every time the scapegoat is the fairy it's like oh no i'm trapped oh fairy come and save me or like oh i'm dead oh fairy come and save me and i want to know what is the fairy's agenda the fairy wants to like give geppetto something good because he gives people good stuff so you know like wants to give geppetto something in, in return but like ends up just helping out like quite a bit like what is this fairy like? What's his? What's what's their deal? I don't know. <laughs> we'll never know. I, I don't know, <laughs> really. I feel like there is room to expand, as you said, about like wrapping up these plot lines and you know, like talking about where Geppetto, how he gets into the whale. I feel like that's what I would like the live action film to expand upon. However, I don't think it needs a whole lot of time. And I have a feeling that the live action film is going to be like two hours long when it doesn't need to be. Yeah, I, I feel like they're going to add in like a point of scene. You know, it'd be great. In the trailer, we saw for Guillermo de Toro's version of Pinocchio. Oh, yes. That looks incredible, by the way. It does. And there's a lot more emotion to it. Like you can see with Geppetto and Pinocchio. And I feel like this is going to be a really emotional version of, of the story. I haven't watched the trailer for the modern 2022 version of Pinocchio. Like Me neither. Hanks one. Have you watched yeah, the trailer? No, I haven't there is it, a so. trailer. There is a trailer, but I haven't seen it. I'll go in blind. I'll go in blind. Actually, that's... That's going to be really interesting. Uh, I'll go. Yeah. And, yeah. But we seem to be like, definitely. Hey, like comment below or email us. If you want to see us do Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, because hell, I'd love to do it. That sounds great. But yeah. what I'm kind of curious about is why are we getting so many Pinocchio films? So we got the Disney reboot make. We've got the Guillermo del Toro one. We also had Pinocchio, a true story earlier this year. And, Wait, what? and and there was an Italian version with Roberto Benini as well, like a, like a year or so Wait, ago. Wait, why do you remember a live action version of Pinocchio? Like it was so terrifying. I'm I like, know that's the, that's that's the Italian one with Roberto Benini. Yes. Why is that so terrifying? <laughs> I was watching it. I think what we've learned is that Pinocchio is destined to be terrifying. There is no universe where Pinocchio isn't scary. Apart from Guillermo del Toro's, because that looks incredible, by the way. It does look incredible, but I wouldn't put it past Guillermo del Toro to, to have oh, something Oh, yeah, it's really Guillermo creepy. del Toro, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, he could, he, could we- he, could, he could well put something terrifying in there. Of course he will. The donkeys. Anyway. Um... <laughs> it's all about the donkeys. I just want to oh. say, the final thing that I have to say is Jiminy Cricket is what a guy. Like, I, I love what, him. What a guy. He's, what? He's, he's funny. He's a little bit horny and he just like oh yeah he, he he is so loyal and i love when he gets the badge at the end it's just uh, cute. Yeah. and his and his voice is so welcoming and warm i just think he's a great he's, he's just a what a guy what a guy what, what a guy what what a chad trying to protect pinocchio from the dark stuff but he also fear but also being the conscience as well isn't you mcgregor playing as Jiminy Cricket in the Gilmore Toro's I one? I think he is, which is perfect casting, let's be honest. Ah, uh, uh, I can't wait to hear the voice just, like, coming in, just, like, being the narrator and then helping. Mm. Oh, that's... Yeah, yeah, that's going to be... That's going to be cool. But who's going to be Jiminy Cricket in the 22? <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> that's a good question. I can have a look at that now. It's Joseph Gordon-Levitt. No. Yeah. No. What? Really? Yeah. Okay. What? Okay. I can. <laughs> I can get around this. Yeah. Sure. Why not? Why sure. not? He, the legend himself, George, <laughs> Joseph the, Gordon-Levitt. 
the man, the myth, the legend. We should use his real name, Robin. <laughs> anyway. Robin, yes. <laughs> anyway. The, the, the greatest um, plot twist of all time. Don't, don't even get me, Al. <laughs> you should use your real name. I like that name. Robin. That's Robin. the worst thing. Wow. That's the worst. <laughs> that's the worst thing the Dark Knight trilogy did. Oh my god. Anyway. I, um, I, I bet one no, brothers decided to get him get Chris Van and say, please, please, please. Please, Chris, Chris, please. We need a spin-off. We need we need a you know sidekick and like fine. Okay, Nick. Robin. <laughs> anyway, yes. Uh Pinocchio. So yeah, Pinocchio, 1940. What are you gonna give it out of ten? An eight? Yeah, I'll go over seven. It's it's pretty good. It holds up quite well. Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Will the live action reboot hold up just as well? We'll see next week, which is what we're going to be covering. Thank you, everybody, for listening. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and give us a five star review on Spotify and give us a follow or a subscribe, depending on where you're listening. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram, Alstein Film Pod, and give us an email. Tell us your thoughts on Pinocchio, the new one and the old one, and ask us any questions about anything, and we will reply to them right here on the podcast. And you can send us that at alsteinfilmpod at gmail.com. We have less than a minute until the Zoom call ends. Good luck, John. All right. All right thank you, everyone. Uh, be safe, be good, <laughs> learn everything from this film. It's so dark, and um, yeah, um, take what you're given. Give nothing back. Goodbye. Goodbye.